is your name in all the earth. So it begins Psalm chapter 8. And that thought is appropriate as we continue the study of the names of God, those names by which God has self-revealed himself in his written word. We recall that the name in reference to God includes all that he is, his character and his attributes. There are three main names by which God, the one true God, has made himself known, two of which we've covered. The first was Elohim, which is more of a general term, and when we think of Elohim, we think of God's power and his sovereignty. Yahweh, the second name, is God's personal name. And it tells us that God is a God of relationship. And God wants to have a relationship with us. And, and whenever uh, we read Yahweh, which is expressed by capital L, capital O, capital R-D in most translations, we know that God is dealing as a relational God. The third name is one that is very special also as the other two. And this is Adonai. The Hebrew word Adonai, and that's our subject this morning. When you read your Bible, it's it's good to to look at how each one of these words are translated because it tells us something very special about it. when you read uh, the uh, the word God, G O D, large G, capital G, small O C, small D. That is. Uh, Elohim, and we read, and that's kind of a general name for God. When you read Yahweh, or when Yahweh is, or Jehovah, as as it's also uh, translated, um, you see that in all capital letters, capital L O R D, with all caps. It's important that each name of God, as you read it, that, that gives you insight on, on what God wants us to know and to consider when we're reading that particular verse. For example, chapter 1 of Genesis, we just see God, Elohim. God's powerful. He is a creator. He is, he is sovereign. He is, he is creating. But when you get to chapter 2, you see Yahweh, because God is creating man, and he's talking about how much uh, God is, is saying, I'm making man in my own image, and he's a relational God, and, and he wants us to reflect, and mankind reflects who God is in his nature. Both Elohim and Yahweh speak of God's relation to us, who he is, and how he relates to us. But this third name, Adonai, talks about our response to him. How are we to respond to God? The name Adonai makes a claim upon our obedience and upon our service, and is translated Lord. Capital L, cap, small O R D, Lord. The meaning of the word Adonai comes from a common word, which is used over 500 times in the New Testament, in the Old Testament rather. Around 300 times, it refers to God, and the other 200, approximately, deal with just the relationship of a owner to his servant. He is their Lord or owner. The root of the word is Adam, and Adonai is the plural of that. It's very instructive that when this word is used of a man and his relationship to his servant it is translated it is always in Hebrew in the original uh, 
manuscripts, it's always in the singular, Adam. But when it's referring to God, it always is in the plural. And this gives us the idea of the Trinity, as does what we saw in the plural use of uh, Elohim, which is also a plural word. In Genesis 24, when which records the uh, the account of the servant of Abraham, whose name is Eleazar, when he was going up to uh, to the the family Abraham's family that lived up in the up in the north to find a wife for Isaac. Verse 12 records the servant's prayer when he arrives at the well of Abraham's brother Nahor's descendants. With these words, he says, O Yahweh, the Elohim of my Adon Abraham. In other words, my master Abraham. Please, please grant me success today, <clears throat> pardon me, and show loving kindness to my Adon, singular, my master Abraham. But when referring to God, as I said, the word always occurs in the plural, Adonai. When referring to God, it signifies ownership. That God is the master, the owner of every member of the human race. And while sin has blinded so many people to this fact, there will come a time, as we read in the New Testament, where every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is what? Lord. That he is Lord. That he is the master. That he is the owner to the glory of God the Father. You see, God as Adonai, Lord, claims unrestricted obedience of each person. And that's the meaning when we read Lord. Obedience. The claim stems from the fact that God is our creator. He is our master. The use of the word in reference to God first appears in Genesis 15 and plainly reveals the relationship to man and what he expects of him. In Genesis 15:1, Yahweh came to Abram in a vision saying, Do not fear, Abram. I am a shield to you. Your reward shall be very great. And Abram replied, O Adonai Yahweh, Master, Lord, he acknowledged Jehovah as his master. It was easier perhaps for Abram, now Abram, remember, was his old name before God changed it to Abraham. It was easy for him to understand this relationship because he lived in a culture where slavery was commonly practiced. Nathan Stone remarks in his book, The Names of God, Lordship meant complete possession on one hand, complete submission on the other. Abraham himself sustained the relationship of master and lord over a very considerable number of souls. Abraham had many, many servants. Therefore, in addressing Jehovah as Adonai, he acknowledged God's complete possession of and perfect right to all that he was and all that he had. You know, we consider slavery in a negative sense. And rightly, of one man to another, that's probably very true. But in those days, slavery was not completely evil. The purchased slave had a much nearer relationship to his master than did a hired servant. The slave had the right to his owner's protection. That was very important in that, in that day and time. He also was entitled to his provision. The master had the obligation to completely take care of the servant. He also had the expectation of the, of the master's help and direction. And often there was a genuine affection as seen in the relationship between Abraham and his servant Eleazar. Because before, when Abraham was not able to have children, was not able to have a son with his wife Sarah, 
He said, well, Eleazar will inherit everything that I have. And God said, no, I'm going to give you and Sarah a son. And that miraculous son in their old age was Isaac. Psalm 123, verse 2 says, Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait on the Lord our God. Psalm 145, 15 says, The eyes of all look expectantly to you, and you give them their food in due season. God as our Lord. God is the perfect Adonai to his children. He always has our best interests in mind, and we can rest in the benevolent, the kind, the gracious character of our Adonai. Our Lord will often assign us to a difficult task, one to which we know we are inadequate. So it was with Moses when God told him to deliver Israel from Egypt. And Moses addresses God as his Adonai, as his master, acknowledging God speaking and his right to command. And then, but then he tried to escape the assignment by, by uh, pointing out, I'm inadequate in speech. He said, I, I'm not eloquent. I'm slow with speech. Remember God's answer. I always kind of chuckle when it's in. God says, who made man's mouth? Even after that, Moses said, well, please, Lord, please, please, Adonai, please, my master, send someone else. And then it says God's anger arose against Moses because he was trying to get out of what God clearly told him to do. Our Lord doesn't give us a task that's impossible without giving us the resources with which to accomplish that. We may not know how he's going to accomplish that. And it may look like it's impossible. But all things are possible with God. For Moses, it was a resource of his brother Aaron. We've seen Adonai in combination. <coughs> pardon me. We've seen Adonai in combination with Jehovah or Yahweh. In the book of 2 Samuel, it says this. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord, or Yahweh, capital L, capital O, capital R, D, and said, Who am I, O Lord God? Small, O, R, D, capital L, in other words, and then capital G, capital O, capital D. Now, we haven't seen that before, but when you see Adonai and Yahweh together, to avoid kind of the clumsy Lord, Lord, and not knowing exactly, it's translated Lord God. And this is what David is praying here. He says, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that you brought me this far? And yet, this was as a small thing in your sight, O Lord God. And you have also spoken of your servant's house for a great while to come. Is this the manner of man, O Lord God? And what more can David say to you? For you, Lord God, know your servant. In Isaiah 6, we find a very significant use of Adonai. The account is of the vision that Isaiah had at the very beginning of his ministry when he saw the Lord high and lifted up. This vision occurred, occurred the year that King Uzziah died. Now, King Uzziah had been a good king. He kind of finished kind of on a, on a decline, but he had been a good king. 52 years. He was the longest reigning king in Judah. He was the only king that Isaiah had ever known. Uzziah was therefore his earthly lord and master. His earthly lord and master had died, but that tragedy was swept aside by a vision of Adonai. The Lord of Lords was inside. And this Lord was seated on a throne, high above any earthly throne, high above any king 
or any ruler. This Adonai was surrounded by the fiery seraph, and he was the Lord of the hosts of heaven. And in the presence of this ultimate holiness, Isaiah cried out, Woe is me, for I am undone, I am destroyed, I am, I am cut off, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell among a people of unclean lips. And if his lips were unclean, so was his heart. In the presence of absolute holiness, and it's interesting that no other attribute of God is ever spoken of three times, holy, holy, holy. We don't read righteousness, 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 or uh, omnipresence, omnipresence, and, but holiness is the essence of God's character. Holy, holy, holy. And in that, in the, uh, the, the view of that absolute holiness, Isaiah saw himself and, and saw his sin.